Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news happening on Detroit's east side where a man is shot by officers inside a gas station. That man was rushed to the hospital. Investigators saying he was shot multiple times. It happened inside the BP station, which is between Harper and Gratiot. That's where our Larry Spruill is live tonight with the latest on this. Larry. Good evening, Jason. Police said that, that shooting happened inside this gas station around 7 p.m. tonight. They were simply walking around this neighborhood doing their rounds when they walked inside the gas station and things escalated quickly. Thursday night, Detroit Police and Michigan State Police surrounded this intersection of Wade Street and Connor Street on Detroit's east side as they investigated a police involved shooting at this BP gas station around 7. It all started when officers walked inside the gas station. They observed an individual in the gas station that was uh, engaged in some suspicious behavior. Uh, the officers approached the individual to talk to him. Assistant Chief David Lavalley said it was during that conversation they noticed a 31 year old rolling a marijuana blunt. They walked up to him. That's when he tried to leave. Then the two officers and the suspect got into a physical altercation. As he broke free from the officers, he produced uh, the handgun from his waistband. Uh, two officers fired shots, uh, multiple shots at the individual. How many shots were fired at the suspect? Um, I, I believe seven. This is at least the third police involved shooting in just weeks. You know, I don't know what what motivates individuals necessarily to do what they do, but uh, we do see a lot more firearms out on the street than we ever have in the past. So officers are um, forced to uh, deal with that. And emergency crews transported that suspect to the hospital. Police say he is in temporary serious condition. We are live on the Detroit East Side tonight. Larry Sproul, Local 4. All right, Larry, we appreciate it. With Michigan in yet another COVID surge tonight from new, new guidance from the State Health Department for students returning to classes next week. This is boosters for 12 to 15 year olds is likely to get the green light soon. Our Mara McDonald is live downtown tonight. Mara, when do you think we're going to hear more from the FDA on those boosters? You know, Jace, earlier in the week, the CDC director said that the expectation was it was going to be imminent. Now we expect it to happen on Monday. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services sending a letter to superintendents across the state warning them that with the high transmissibility of Omicron and the highest ever daily case rate, when students return next week to school, mitigation factors need to be in full effect, including vaccinations, testing, and indoor masking for all students, even those vaccinated, plus to either cancel or make virtual gatherings with 100 people or more. That includes sporting events. Superintendents across Metro Detroit say the mitigation guidance, well, it's not a problem, but adequate staffing might be. Knowing that we have good safety mitigation in place in our schools with masking and distancing and contact tracing, we really look at staffing levels and student levels to determine if we have enough staff to make school work. Late tonight, the New York Times is reporting the FDA is set to give the OK for boosters for 12 to 15 year olds. That would only be the Pfizer booster. Currently, those boosters have been approved for 16 and 17 year olds. Vaccination remains the top priority of the state and federal health officials as hospitals are once again seeing an influx of COVID patients and don't automatically expect to get treatments like monoclonal antibodies if you do get sick because supplies are running low, hospitals are having to be selective with who meets the criteria for treatment. The resources for actually getting the monoclonals are down, but also staff is down. We've got a lot of staff that are out with COVID currently, and, and that includes uh, the infusion staff to, to administer that medication. Back here live. So where are we as far as COVID cases in Michigan? Well, typically we get data from the state on Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays because tomorrow is New Year's Eve. We're not going to get those updated numbers until next Monday. We're live downtown tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara. And speaking of New Year's Eve, a lot of people coming and going tomorrow. Traveling important and Paul's checking the forecast for everybody tonight. Hey, Paul.
Absolutely. Uh, tonight, fairly quiet, although we are not going to necessarily get through the night unscathed. And I'll explain that in one second, but nice shot of campus marshes. The, the ice was packed just a little while ago. I wonder if they closed the ice at 11 o'clock because, I mean, there were a billion people on there just a short time ago. Right now, temps are in the 30s still, but notice the visibility is now Ann Arbor and Metro Airport down to a half a mile visibility in fog, but hardly any fog port here on Adrian, so it's not widespread necessarily, but there is some fog that's approaching dense fog uh, capabilities there in parts of the area. You don't see fog on the satellite, but you see little area sprinkles coming in as well, so there could be a sprinkle overnight, and again, we have these patches of dense fog, but uh, tomorrow is going to be a quiet day as well. We will, I think, at some point get a few breaks in the overcast, a little bit of sunshine, but notice warming up mid 40s for a high now coming up at 1117. We have had to add a possible shower to the New Year's Eve forecast. New models are coming in right now. I'm going to get over to the computer right now and take a look at those and let you know. But right now what I've seen so far trends toward less falling as rain, maybe more as snow. I'll be back in a few, Jason. All right, Paul, Detroit police need your help finding a man who's accused of abducting a woman at gunpoint and then sexually assaulting her. Police say the woman was walking to work Tuesday morning near Spruce and Trumbull on the west side. That's when the suspect approached her with a gun and threatened to abduct her. He then assaulted her before leaving. The suspect was last seen walking near Temple and Grand River Avenue. It was one month ago today, a student opened fire inside Oxford High School, killing four students and injuring several others. On Monday, some students in the district will be back in school, but there will be some safety changes. The superintendent released a video this week letting parents know exactly what to expect. Safety, both physical and emotional, is at uh, the top of our list. A couple updates there, we've added an additional um, SRO for the middle school full time between now and the end of the school year. Uh, we are we are doing clear backpacks for middle school bridges and high school students when they return. SRO as in sc school resource officer. All schools will also have therapy dogs in the buildings as well as counselors trauma specialists and private security in addition to those school resource officers. While the elementary and middle schools go back next week, the district is still discussing when the high school students will return. Well, it wasn't pretty. In fact, it was so wobbly tonight, we're not even going to throw music over that graphic. But tonight, the Spartans are indeed Peach Bowl champions. The tie worked. It was a thrilling fourth quarter comeback. Jamie joins us in the studio with the it's really kind of a perfect ending to a season. It's so Mel Tucker here uh, as the Spartans turn it around and take it home. Well, we say it's six Tuck coming Tuck coming. It's been quite a turnaround <laughs> season for the Spartans, Jason, from two and five in 2020 to 11 and two this year and Peach Bowl champions. Down 21 10 in the third, the Spartans turn it around the fourth. Peyton Thorne throws it up. Jaden Reed goes up and gets it with a defender all over him. Great catch. MSU leads 24 21. 36 seconds to go. Last chance for Pitt. Down three. Third string QB Davis Bevel throws over the middle. He's picked off by Cal Halliday. Halliday takes this one all the way back. 78 yards on the return. MSU comes back to win 31 21. So it wasn't pretty. Spartans certainly could have used Kenneth Walker. Only 56 yards rushing tonight, but Peyton Thorne came up big, throwing for 354 yards and three touchdowns. We hope to have some post-game reaction coming up in sports. Uh, and if we don't have post-game reaction, we can all just light a cigar, and we know that's Mel Tucker's reaction. Well, I'll just ask you some questions because you're a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> we'll answer them. Still, a win is a win. Exactly. Thanks, Jamie. Sure. Much more to come at 11, including a way to get back some of your gambling losses and not just for this year. Thousands of families forced from their homes. The fast moving wildfires burning everything in their path. But first, he shot and killed five people near Denver and inside look into the books he self published, which foreshadowed these attacks. It's next.